Sometimes like when I see a starter that's perfectly ripe and about to be mixed, I'm like, yes! Grains are not the most exciting thing to think about. I also do think it's something that we take for granted. We can just grab a bag of flour and it's there. When I see flour downstairs, I'm thinking about how, like how much, like I have anxiety when handling it in the same way that maybe, you know, chefs feel when they're handling proteins. Just having that respect for how important they are um, not only translates into our product, but it also overall encourages a more proactive and helpful thinking about our entire local food system. Hi, my name is Nora Allen. I'm the executive head baker at Mel the Bakery in Chinatown, New York. Grains and legumes being part of a farmer's uh, crop rotation strengthen their topsoil. If you don't care about grains, if you want me to stop talking about grains, just consider that if you care about any farm fresh produce you get, zucchini, uh, strawberries, cherries, what have you, grains play an important role in making those happen and making that farm more resilient to make them happen in the future. Well, it's 9.15, we're at the, so when I get in at four, I load the oven, check the starters, feed the starter, because we actually have two mix cycles. The countries that I'm mixing now, I'll we'll get our second starter, and then I'll feed the starter again once I mix them. It's a clean flavor, like, I don't like, like an overly sour sourdough because I want to taste the flowers. I want to taste what's going on. And those really sour, sour, sour sourdoughs to me are really distracting. Mel is a neighborhood bakery, like really focused on being just a small spot that you can rely on for a really thoughtful product. Almost all of our stuff comes from New York State, from our dairy to our flowers, our grains constantly evolving um, to be more and more actively part of this local and regional food system that, you know, we're working hard to make stronger. This is our dough for our country and our focaccia. The whole point is to taste what's going on, so. When I use, like, a lot of one flower in something, I have to like really like it. In the small valley, like we use that and farm around half white in our croissants and then a little bit of rye. So there's like a lot of depth in there. So here at Mel, we have both a croissant and a bread program, um, all sourdough. It's very seasonal. Rye is unusual to put in croissants because it's structurally a complicated grain. We add just enough so that you see the brand and you see it in the croissant, but you also just get like that richness of flavor. But I always just found it so bizarre from a very young age working in food that we neglect flour in that way because especially for things like bread where you have three ingredients and you want to build a flavor, why would you not build flavor in your flour? So these actually are a touch underproofed, if I mean hypercritical. That's why they're so small. Some of these look better than others, but they're shaped too tight. I think our menu is exciting because all everything from our croissants to our breads contain a percentage of fresh milled flours and some like our brought our 100% fresh milled in-house. Like right now, we're running a ramp croissant with poppy seeds and Gouda cheese, a really good Gouda. We always have our einkorn poppy seeded niche. And we 99% of the time have our spelt baguette. 
So this is our red fife. I mean, it's called a hard wheat. That's hard is typically synonymous with like the protein content. Um, whereas this is einkorn, which is like a ancient grain. And you can see it's like longer and softer. It has a lot of flavor. Every pastry almost gets topped with some extra little touch. That's just like an extra piece of love. We put a lot of olives in our bread. We we'll want to make sure every loaf has more olives than you know what to do with it. Everyone who works here, we all try to make sure that its endpoint is a special place, you know? These are the spelt baguettes. These are easier to eat sometimes. People like them a little more. It's all about accessibility. Sometimes when you are really passionate about local food and food systems, it can be really alienating of a lot of people and customers and I wanted people to feel a part of it. Like come, coming here and ordering something simple like our banana bread, which is over 50% fresh milk barley, and talking about it and calling it barley banana bread and having people talk about, oh yeah, I had a great barley banana bread. So this is our country loop. Our hydration on this one is around 95%. Soft crumb. It's our number one wholesale bread and it's probably our most popular retail bread. Having people ask more questions about what is spelt, what is barley, what is, you know, what is einkorn. Just having people begin to ask those questions creates this curiosity. And that curiosity can lead to a demand. And the more that people seek out these grains from our local food system, the more incentive there is for farmers to delegate more acreage to them. People are always like, your bread tastes like it's almost seasoned. And I'm like, seasoned with grains, <laughs> like. I think just a marvel of bread and why it's always been a part of our society and our civilization is that it's a transformational food. That line between refined and rustic, it's like a hard line to walk in the same way. And I feel like that's kind of in the spirit of Mel, I would say. I care about doing what I do and standing behind what I do. And I will never extend beyond that. That's all for this episode of Food Curated. I'm Liza DeGia. Be sure to connect with us on social media and eat more stories. I'll see you next week.